very, very different. Thank you um, for mentioning about the recording. The recording is back on. So I don't know if the recording went off when we actually uh, moved from breakouts to back, but we are back on. Thank you so much for uh, mentioning. And uh, useful, is it useful? So it's, it's not enough to have a site. Is it really adding value usable? So we know how to define usable and you've, you've, uh, you're going to hear more about usability, but there are many characteristics that will good design, good eyes will support for good design. And, uh, and then scalable, I think is very important one. As I said, we're going to do eyes for, uh, for five, 10 years. So we need to be able to add new items to the IE and not have to rethink the eye. A very good example is adding books, adding news articles, adding a new section. I should be able to add a new section and not have to rethink, right? So uh, very important to keep in mind that we're building things for uh, long term. When we think of information architecture, and we've already been doing this, and I've been asking you to think about these elements as we uh, as we were um, doing our little exercises, is we have to think of a specific user, right? A user type or a user type or a user. And, uh, and then we had to think about where are they in their journey? Are they trying to buy? Are they already bought? So this is where you would see return, right? Return, uh, cancel, pause my service. So these are different stages too, right? So each stage has different set of goals. And then I call them micro journeys because you're designing for micro journey and your site will have so many of them. Business, what is the business trying to do? Uh, very important, you're gonna hear that over and over, but the business, the customer, in where? Is this a website, is this a kiosk, is this a mobile? This framework is the same consistently. Uh, and uh, if you do more and more courses with me, you will know and you will hear it. So when we think of IE, information architecture, it's the structure. How do we structure content? How do we make sense of the information? How do we organize? How do we categorize? How do we structure the information based on the mental model? So the more we know about the user and we are gonna be building empathy, we're gonna know about users, you'll be amazed. It seems obvious, easy for us to find what we're looking for in the goal, but some people may have real challenges. Remember, we're advanced, we're advanced users. We know this, we do design, but not everybody is, the labeling, what is the choice of labels? How do we represent and how do we label? Very, very important. And the label, picking a label is where Google Trends that I share with you will help you. The navigation, so we're gonna learn about designing navigation, how people browse, search is part of them too, which is the next item. So these are all the topics in this course, right? And then as I have shared early on with you, the first one, once we know what we're building, why we're building, a new site or why are we building this new experience that you're going to do for with Yvonne as well. Uh, you're going to need to think about who is your user and then uh, who are the user and then the micro journeys and what is that one experience. Once we know this, then you move into design and I is the first deliverable. Everything else is affected. If you had a bad information architecture, everything else will follow will be bad. It's really, really important very, very critical. It's the most critical, uh, I would say, deliverable because everything else will have a domino effect. This is a very common uh, representation of IA, so we're gonna see more and more of these, but it's a tree. So this example here, it's a tree structure, right? We have home and then we have level one. Sometimes we call this level zero, level one, level two, and then it's hard to see here, but level three as well, you can think of level three. Uh, we're going to learn about what are the good practices for doing good diagrams, but I should be able to look at the diagram and have a clear sense of what the content will be, how many, how many sections or levels there are, and then the pages subsequently too. So what is I? It's organizing content. So we're talking about organizing logically, but what is logically, right? So knowing the user will help. Creating clear and intuitive labels, designing straightforward usable navigation paths. Um, and, uh, and then interaction as well. We love to organize content. We organize content all the time. This is how we make sense of our world. We actually save information in their brain in little drawers, okay? So if you have done psychology, do we have anybody who's done psychology? Yes? Ashkwashta, is that correct how I see your name? Sorry, I think I missed that. Sorry. Sorry. Akshata. 
accepted. Yes. Do you you have you psychology? Have psychology? Yes, back in college, uh, I had uh, a subject psychology. I that I graduated with. Awesome. So, so this was familiar, 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 right? Right. Yeah. And, uh, and we uh, also we have both of I think, and kind of have a few. No, I'm getting feedback here. I don't know why I'm getting feedback. Let's see if there's a way I can do. I think it's good now. So uh, the way we store information, the way we actually represent the world around us is very much in little boxes. And we categorize and we group. It's easy because sometimes it's easy to retrieve. It's quicker for us to retrieve information. And we do the same thing when we go online. We do the same thing when we navigate, when we look at things. We put things in brackets. We try to say, OK, this is a book, so that we know books, we know things. And then we say it's easier to compare and easier to retrieve and easier to find. But we do. Organize, organize information all around us uh, all the time and that's good so what do we organize can you can you list and we maybe you want to take a few minutes what have you what do you organize or what have you recently organized and maybe you want to type your answer on the slide if you want to <clears throat> or you can post them on the chat it's up to you but you could type in your answers here yes Yes, the fridge, the freezer. Yes, absolutely. We do organize all the time and we have different ways of organizing the content, right? Uh, but we would be quite amazed to see that we would probably have similar patterns, but we'll have some uh, ways that may be unique to us. But we are familiar with garage, right? The garage, the computer, the computer file. So there are artifacts there that we can already use and we can borrow. And what's funny is Online, if someone, if you want to do a, a good design and a good job, you will know what is the user already familiar with and you will try to organize and structure the content similarly to what they do in real life or how they do in other places. So if you think of, uh, yes, the uh, how we organize flight, uh, files for clients, collector cards, a homeward, absolutely. So think of a grocery store and uh, the way that the grocery store are organized uh, are very pretty consistent in, in store to stores. And if they're not, this is where you get very confused and you don't even know and you can't even find and you start searching people. But we are human creators that love to organize content. Uh, we have many, uh, many, um, any other areas or other ways that we know that we are organizing. So topics, right? Uh, we have uh, general knowledge, we have philosophy, psychology, religion. We are organizing and putting things into buckets. If you think of, a, uh, of an art chart, this is how we actually show hierarchy and this is also how we organize and this is how we groups and we have very similar ways of doing. Yes, the art chart from one company to another company may change and may vary, but we are creators who actually like to organize. So as I have said, we do this because it's, uh, well, we can save, the information and we can retrieve it very easily and then we can also make sense and uh and then sometimes it's easier for us to go back to things so when we try to organize things we know and it's almost like we have a visual map and a representation of what it is so how do we decide on the best i how do we decide that this is the best i or the best information architecture that we want to do so there are certain steps that we can follow and when you do your assignments i encourage you to do something very similar to this we are going to do benchmarkings right so let's say that you want to work on shopper drug smart or lablas and you want to design a new experience or you want to work on uh, the site one of the site that you will pick lablas for you for your small assignments as uh, as we were calling them uh, so you're probably going to do some benchmark too to see how it compares so uh, we're not going to be designing uh, well, yeah, we are going to redesign. We're going to do the I. We're going to rethink the I of a, uh, let's say, metro. Then you're going to look at probably other sites to get inspiration to see how they're doing. How are they doing it? And that will guide you for your design for maybe even your information architecture. You may notice that metro is missing a lot of content, right? So doing benchmark helps you to see what is out there. Can someone give me the benefits of doing benchmarks for me for uh, as well for users? So what is the benefit to user if by doing benchmarks? If you want to uh, redesign, let's say, Metro or uh, Rexall. 
Yes, Marisa. So we have an idea of what people are expecting on a site so that we can keep things similar for them. Yes, similar, familiar. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's why we do it. Yes, Maria. We can also see the mistakes they are making so we do not repeat the same ones. Yes, learn from them. There's no point to revamp the wheel. Absolutely. So learn from them, see their mistake. And the biggest value is people are learning how to buy shopping, grocery shopping online. People are learning how to buy books online. People have learned e-commerce. So there's no point to be cute and try to do different because this is where you confuse them, right? So, and also looking at opportunities for you, for maybe, uh, maybe get uh, more customer to buy maybe certain uh, items for you that the others are making difficult to even find as well. So absolutely, there are many benefits, the business priorities. So the best I will support the business priority and uh, it starts from the business. So Indigo is selling books, but what else? And as I share, and I think I shared that with you yesterday, uh, we think of buying, right? We all think of dollar, but there's also saving cost, right? Helping business saving cost. And this is where you have all your self-serve items. So never forget about the things that I want to do as a customer that I want to do online so that I don't have to call. I don't have to call Rogers. I don't have to call Indigo. I don't have to call Roots. You're going to use a lot of analytics. The analytics will tell you, are people actually going to where I think they should go, right? Uh, and if they're not, then there's an issue. They're not finding. Why are they not finding? The user mantle, knowing the user and the standards or archetypes that we've created that people have come across will help you. So you have a lot of tools that are available to you. And uh, I will say, this is a bit of my quote, a good eye is actually feels invisible. I, I don't see it. I, I feel like there's nothing in front of me. I just carry on and I do and I complete, right? So again, I have a lot of characteristic that shares with you what is a good eye. And uh, it's as some of them I said, scalable. So I can add, I can expand my eye, good qualities. And this is very important because we're building for five to 10 years. A visual scent, anybody knows what a visual scent is? A visual scent, yes, Maria. I maybe it has to do something with the brand design, like you use the same colors and the same typography, so you know that you are still on the same website. Very good. So good try. Yes, there is the the yes. It will give you a sense of familiarity, and yes, this is a site. This is a place. I've seen that brand. It looks familiar. I know it's them. Uh, if you have never been to Metro, so some of you said they've used Metro and they've never been, what the visual scent will also do is it will give you by looking, just by looking at the site right now, you can see, you can, you will scanning, right? And I'm going to do some thinking loud here, okay? So I'll pretend that I have never been to Metro and I will do some thinking aloud. This is very relevant for years ago testing. Is I'm coming as a first time user and let's say that I have never been to Metro, but I heard that Metro was probably a grocery shopping, but not a hundred percent. People scan, and this is what we do visually, and this is how we read online. We scan, we jump, we scan, we go in all directions. Uh, so I'm going to probably go, oh, my online grocery store. So I'm already seeing grocery. I go, well, that's probably a grocery store. And then search products. I can search products. Oh, they have recipes. And then online grocery. I can do my online grocery services, flyers. They have flyer recipes. Uh, there's a store. They have stores. Uh, there's a cart, my list. I could probably save my list, sign in. I can probably create an account. Done. So you actually scan through and you, you start making sense of what is this brand and what is this all about. So the visual scent will give you clues of what is this site about? What is this business about? And what can I do when I come to this site? So it's giving you clues to, uh, to make sense of uh, of the business and make sense of what is available for you. So a good IA will facilitate that uh, through the labeling, through the navigation. If you remember when we were looking at the Toronto Sun, the left navigation was keeping all items open so I can see what else I can do. So they were encouraging exploration, but that was also helping me with getting a, a quick understanding of what the Toronto Sun is all about. 
And remember, I may have come from a search engine, so I may not know at all the Toronto Sun. And just seeing all the navigation open gives me a lot of information about the Toronto Sun, right? And this people will do it psychologically. They will scan through and they will scan, scan, scan and say, oh, this is a site about news. So what else in terms of characteristic? Uh, so we have different ways that we want to navigate, right? Or get to the content. <clears throat> We're going to learn more about those. It's memorable, easy to learn, prevent errors. These are, this, what do these sounds like? So I don't know if you're very familiar with heuristic evaluation, but we are going to be talking about heuristic. Those are heuristics, right? And uh, heuristic slash qualities of good, good usability. And then exploration, recognition versus recall. That's a tough one. In that heuristic evaluation, people always have challenges too. And it also communicates a sense of priorities. You're going to see, you're going to have to make choices for your IA. And, uh, and the good IA will surface highly visited items. Your analytics will tell you which items people often find or click on and see. And you may discover that it's actually not available on the main navigation. And you then your goal at that point is probably added to your top navigation, right? Uh, which you will be surprised that a lot of companies sometimes miss on that, uh, that little uh, low hanging fruits, I would call it. Now we have some, I do have some examples of other examples of other sites that do good or do bad. Air Canada is one of them. And, uh, and then um, we have about 20 minutes left. So let's explore a little bit of Air Canada in terms of, of website and some of the elements that we will see. So I think we've talked about, so let's think about user goal. If I'm an Air Canada user and I want to come to Air Canada, I would probably want to book a flight. Maybe I want to do my check-in. Maybe I want to make a change to my flight. So these are all reasons. And then what you would do is you would try to do all of these and see how Air Canada's website is facilitating it. So that would be how you would go about. Now, if we think about some of the elements that we are seeing on the Air Canada website, uh, we have the logo, which is very consistent, right? On the left-hand side, that's fine. We're not going to spend too much time. But these are the categories. So these are the categories that Air Canada has that you can do. So I can book a flight. So this is probably where I would go if I'm going to book my flight. Plan is probably where I'm actually looking for inspiration and ideas. Book and fly. This, to me, I would say, how are they different? They look actually very similar. They probably know very well what they meant by fly, but I think we have a very good example of book fly. I don't know about you, but I'm doing think aloud. I'm not sure what the difference are. Do we? Are you? And these are top level navigation items, right? How is book and fly different or similar? Do you know where would you go? Yes. We're not sure what fly means in this context. Air Canada probably is very clear, but they're the bad people to know that, to make that choice. I think, they see, don't make me think, this is making me think. But if I go to Air Canada and I want to book a flight, and this is where, you know, usability testing will also tell you. But your data will also tell you, do we have a lot of people that actually click on Air Canada and end up leaving the site or leaving that section? That would also be a good indicator of Perhaps people are not finding what they think they would be finding on the book of flight for fly, right? I have a hand raised. Yes, and I didn't see who raised a hand, but yes, Ashley. So I think um, for the question whether book or fly, I know, I know like it makes you like think you're like, wait, and you don't want to think obviously, but um, in this case, I think because they have multiple services, so it's not just airplane they have other uh, access to hotels and cars through air canada so it's like somebody who doesn't know might be like what's this what book so let me press on this um so it kind of becomes like a little like um what's a uh, treasure kind of like a navigation hunt where you're like wait what wait where am i going so uh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely, Ashley. You see, there's a lot of questions. We left with a lot of questions. Now, the user is not necessarily going to question. There's two things that they might do. They may sit there and they may click and explore. They may not, right? And they may just go with, okay, I want to book. So let's see, I want to book a flight. I would probably go to book. And uh, and that's me. But you could find maybe something completely different with another user when you do usability testing, 
okay? You could choose Air Canada for your uh, small projects for 51, 12, and 11 if you wanted to. And, uh, but this is what you will do. And then, but we would explore them. Now I can see book flight. So what you were saying, Ashley, you're absolutely, when I roll over book, I can see, uh, I can see my book travel, book flights, book car, book hotel. So this is where I see all of my products. And you know what, if I want to book a flight, this is probably where I would come. And then I would probably carry on and you would watch the user and see what they do and make notes and see if they're successful. Perhaps maybe this book of flight is not an issue uh, or it is. Now fly, so fly is so broad, right? Now when you roll over it, then you get a bit of visual sense. So rolling over fly will give you a sense, but you have a risk that some people may never roll over fly. And they may never gonna see that very, very important content that they have on their fly. So I will say the similarity between book and fly is so close that I will tell you that there's a chance that people may not know the difference. Uh, it may be an issue or not issue, but the data will tell you if people are clicking. And if you don't see that a lot of people are clicking and people are calling, then perhaps maybe this is an area you would investigate further. But I'm pretty positive that when you actually do usability testing, people will say, what is fly? Like pe people will tell you that. And this will be an indication that maybe we need to do a bit more digging, right? And uh, so, yes, yeah, so when I go fly, then I see flight information, flight status, flight daily, travel, Air Canada on your mobile, on board or fleet at the airport, customer support, okay. I had a feeling of what fly was before I asked a question. And I said, I think this is probably related when you are booked, you already have a booking, you're, you wanna fly. It's travel info right? Is travel info maybe better than flight? Perhaps it is. I don't know. Do you see how much it can go? But we started when the user goal of book a flight. But let's see now what you would do if you were to do, if you were to pick Air Canada, we would say there's going to be a user goal for people that wants to know what are the baggage, the baggage um, uh, alliance if I travel with Air Canada, right? So maybe that becomes your, your goal. And then you would say, let's find baggage allowance. And if you were to come to Air Canada now and say, I want to look for baggage allowance, where would I go, okay? So you would put yourself and try to do this and see where can I find baggage allowance? And, uh, and it would probably be a bit of a challenge, right? So, but again, we have a goal, we have a specific goal, can I find? And if I'm looking for a luggage alliance right now, let's see where I would go. Okay, so I'm going to do something a lot very quickly with you and see if I can find baggage lines. Now I know fly will give me some information, right, for when, for my travel, but I don't know if it will give me a luggage alliance. But, and if you were just the, the one doing the usability testing with me, you would sit there and you would watch me and you would ask me to do exactly what I'm doing now. So I go to fly and I see baggage, baggage, baggage. I'm scanning, I'm scanning, I'm scanning, I'm scanning, and I see nothing. Airport, airport, flight information, flight status, no, no, our fleet that in flight and we prefer sitting, airport information, self, them. Uh, frequently asked question, maybe it's gonna be there. That I see nothing for luggage, in, uh, for baggage uh, alliance, maybe customer support. Let's go for customer support. So here I've already rolled over fly and I didn't find anything. So I go, hmm, there's a chance I may abandon at this point. Baggage, customer support, luggage alliance. Okay, so flight and information international flights, most commonly, okay, most common, what are the sizes and ways for baggage? You see, I had to go far, right? So, uh, and hopefully I'm gonna find something. Carry on baggage, check baggage, da, da, da. I'm focusing on one task, on the micro journey of finding baggage information when I'm actually booked. So, and I was sharing with you that your eye has to support every customer at every stages. And now we're at a customer who's in the stage uh, of uh, post-purchase, right? I already have a flight with you and let me put you in context again. I already have a flight with you and uh, and I'm at a different stage in my journey and, uh, and I'm about to travel. So if I were to do a drawing here, so I am with this customer here. I'm here, post, and uh, I want for luggage info right i'm already done so i have a very specific different needs than anyone else than someone i'm not buying i'm already bought that time so what is my micro journey and what is the customer what does the customer know about me and how do i support him 
at this stage, we know this customer already know about Air Canada. He maybe has traveled very often and uh, he may be more familiar with the certain terminology or not, but there's so much more for that customer that you need to find out versus someone who's about to buy. You will have hundreds of those experiences on your site that you will have to think about. And I stopped here, but now there's a lot more, right? And the experience at this point here, it's been browsing, but I should probably be able to search. So we've looked at it from browsing, but later you would probably look at, can I search on luggage? And can I search and what is that experience and what am I being presented with? So that was Air Canada. And uh, when you look at Air Canada and you look at their site, you look at their navigation, what we do see is Air Canada has made a conscious choice of presenting these options on the top navigation, right? So they didn't say, oh, let's just put, and I will tell you, I worked at Air Canada. I know how picky they will be. So they've decided to pick these options to their top navigation because they get a lot of visibility and a lot of traffic. And I will tell you, every time that you add something here, you get huge increase, percentage increase in visits. And it's usually one, two, three number digit. So sometimes it's like 100% increase. It's really, really phenomenal. And think of it, Air Canada has 300,000 visits a day. Some of, they are not coming to buy. They're probably coming to look for baggage restriction. They're probably looking for buying for uh, doing their web check-in. So Air Canada has made cons uh, uh, conscious decisions of having something for book, having something for planning, something for fly with questioning, aeroplan, customer support, special offer, and sign-in. Sign-in does not belong here. Sign-in should be here. You're going to learn more about convention. And when I roll over, I'm getting a bit of a sense of visual scent. So I'm repeating items that we've taught, but they had to make choices. Air Canada made those choices. Sunwing probably has made other choices and uh, someone else will make other choices, but this is really unique to Air Canada at this point in terms of what they want to present up front. So there, I have more slides to talk about discovery, how you encourage discovery. And, uh, and I have done a lot of critique with uh, with Rogers. I have included some slides about Rogers as well. And uh, in the videos, the async videos that I have posted for this week, you're going to be able to hear more and have more uh, of my insights for the next slides. And let me skip. I'm going to skip to a few slides now, but I have already put the async video that I like for you to follow from the other semester, but I'm going to the same slides, but I'm skipping now because we're running out of time. And uh, but you're welcome to sit and get more insight if you want, or you can just read the slides on your own too, that will be fine. But let's just do a quick recap of what is the anatomy of AI. So we've talked about the AI is are we organized, it's the label, it's the navigation, it's the search. And these are the four assignments pretty much that we have, right? And the user flow as well. So you're gonna learn in here and more in great depth. Um, we talk here about user interface, user structure, organization. So this is really just doing a complete picture of user experience design and UI design, which you will become very, very familiar at between now and the end. I'm going to skip this slide too. The, so when we think of IA, okay, and we've already been talking about IA. So there is a user, there is content, there's also context of use. If you want to think quickly about context of use, it's very different browsing through a website at your desk versus being at a kiosk at the airport trying to do your uh, your uh, flight uh, check-in and also uh, printing your boarding passes, right? We are very in or from your mobile phone. So I think I'm not teaching you anything, but context can be uh, is very important to know where is this thing being used and is the user fully 100% focused as well. I is both a practice and a diagram confusing. So I don't know if uh, if this is all clear or if you even thought yourself, but you're gonna hear, um, yes, there are different. I information architecture, there's a profession for being uh, architects. Some people, that's all they do. They do information architecture. This is what they do. And it's a big job, right? But there's also diagram. You're gonna learn about doing diagrams. So it is a practice and it's also a diagram. But the diagram is one piece of what the information architectures are uh, are meant to do and which you will learn how to do. But it's structuring information and experiences and being super clear 
The information architecture is the person who designed the diagram is what they produce. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to look at a lot of examples. This is a very example, very basic example of an I or of an information architecture diagram. Okay, uh, and uh, don't worry, we're going to have chance to uh, to put that into practice and do some. That would be one of the assignment. That is another example of an information architecture. So this is the I diagram. So you will do that for your small project, for your whatever business or the zoo. So you can do the zoo or you can do your small business if you want. Uh, you'll have a chance to play and get a lot of insight from me. What else? So we have different ways of looking for information needs. So sometimes I know a specific item. So I'm looking for that UX, right? We've talked about looking that UX book. Sometimes I don't. I'm just exploring all of the UX books. But here I was looking for one specific book. And we were looking for Don't Make Me Think. And I found it. Uh, and there's exhaustive or refinding, so you can learn more about this term if you want. But this is just about that you have people that know exactly what they want, you have people that don't really know what they want, and you have people that are halfway. And uh, and uh, go through the video if you want to get more insights or the slides. And uh, and then I have a lot a lot of examples. And uh, and then that will take you through a very specific example of recalling information, finding information, and uh, I will say, don't worry. Go through the video. If you have questions, you can uh, you can ask, but you will become very familiar between now and uh, throughout the semester. Uh, many ways of organizing content, information, stores is one of them, latched. Now, what you will see when you will do your card sorting, when you do your eye, you're probably going to end up doing something similar like this in Miro. Right? Or if you're in person and you want to do some in person, the campus is open, you could probably do and go book a room or do the whiteboard, etc. It's a, it's an option, I'm sure. Um, and uh, this is how we do sometimes. We just put content label on sticky notes and we carry on and we map them to the wall and we brainstorm and we do that as a team collaborative. And this is why you put pairing teams. So let's talk about LATCHED. So LATCHED is an acronym for uh, and it was developed by Richard Saul Werman, and uh, it's similar to the five hat rack. Okay, so again, you probably don't know what the five hat rack is. I have a video uh, on the, uh, the next slides, I believe, for five hat rack. So you can click on that on your own today if you want. But here's LATCH. LATCH is just an acronym to help you. There are multiple ways that we can categorize content or organize. Think of organizing content because I don't want to confuse you. So how do we organize content? And you've seen many ways. And uh, category is one of them. So how do we organize content? Often, location is one of them. And I will show you an example of location. And another way is sometimes alphabet. You'll see that uh, some content is actually arranged by alphabetical order. Other will be by time. Other will be by category. And that's probably the one that we see all the time. We are just looking at Air Canada, right? Book uh, and uh, flights, hotels cruises, vacations, all of that, that those, those are product category, right? By category. And there's also hierarchy, but are con on a continuum. And that's the one that I know the students have more challenges. Uh, and I think this is what we have. So don't get too caught up on hierarchy continuum, but I will be sharing with you more insights and I have more insights as well. But these are just a quick, cute acronym to help you to know uh, or remember what are the different ways that we can actually categorize content. Uh, and as I said, we are very familiar with the category ones because we see that all the time. But you will see example of locations, alphabet, and time as well as we go. And let me just share, and I don't need to think that there's more slides to that, but I will share with you more insight. And I encourage you to look at the five hat uh, video. Let's dig down a little bit more about the latch. So the latch is a lab for this week and you have until midnight to uh, Monday to submit and I think you will be able to spend about an hour on them on it. So let me just share Blackboard. No, that's not what we want. So LATCH, again, acronym, location, alphabetical order, 
timelines, category, hierarchy, or continuum. Um, I will not quiz you on latch and what is latch is, but it's just for you to know that there are different ways that the content can be organized. And uh, here are some tips. So location. Most travel sites use locations uh, quite often. Air Canada may not be a good example, but if you go to Expedia, if you go to Sunwing, if you go to WestJet and you go to vacations, or you go to even TripAdvisor, often you're gonna see sites that actually arrange their site. Uh, they will have uh, by product type. Let's just look at Sunwing and I will show you uh, already. We're gonna have many, many uh, examples of what we're talking about in one, in one site. So packages, flights, hotels, cruises, these are categories. So the C for categories for latch is already, you have a very good example here. So packages, flights, product, those are products, right? So Sunwing could have had a menu navigation called products and then you expand and then you see these. But what they've said is say, no, this is what we sell. So they're exposing packages, flights, hotel, cruises as a level one. Think of them as a level one. So it's one less click for users right? They could have said something called products, but why would you have products? They're smart. They have a lot of space. So they said, we're going to have packages, flight, which is all of our products. So this is a category. So very, very easy. Let's see if Sunwing is somewhere using uh, flights or, or destinations. Things to do. Explore your destination. Here's an example of how the group content and they've, so that I can browse and I can click for destination. So you're gonna find a lot of destination um, uh, on the travel website, okay? I'm helping you with your lab here. And then as a user, yes, and it's almost alphabetical order as well, within, absolutely. Very good point, Ashley. So you're already killing two birds on, but, um, and uh, that is the assignment. So they are doing alphabetical order even Antigua, Aruba, Bahamas, Bonaire, Cayman Island, Costa Rica. So this is how they do it. This works because you may have someone who's actually really interested in Antigua, right? You may have someone who's really interested in uh, uh, Romana. Something else that Sunwing is actually doing very good, I hope they do, is they align me to actually click, right, on the Romana directly. Or maybe I wanna go to Dominican Republic and then see anything to do with Dominican Republic too. So something, you know, and many others will be, will sh give you a lot of insights on how, what they're using for groupings. You can see that they have all excursions. Now they have other types of excursions. So they have category or type of excursion, water, land activities, land. So they have many, many ways to actually organize their content. They're giving flexibility. I'm sharing with you heuristic and flexibility of navigating. So I can navigate to La Romana and, uh, and then I can see all things to do and I can explore. They are actually encouraging exploration at this point too, okay? Let's see if there's, there was alphabetical order as well, right? So we said alphabetical order, which we've seen. Another, uh, another type of business that you will see alphabetical order quite often is uh, maybe school programs or programs. Uh, in class, in school, let's see, I have provided you an example of Niagara College. Let me share with you. So this is Niagara College, which is another college. And then you go to academic programs and then they say programs. And then I click on programs and I get this alphabetical order. So they're presenting me alphabetical order, but perhaps they may, they're, and they're doing, they also, this is a good example of alphabetical order too, alphabetical order. And I can also click quickly uh, access to the Bs. I can also search. So they're giving me a lot of flexibility. I'm sharing with you a lot of things here. User control, user of flexibility. I see alphabetical order and I can click and I can see if this is the program I'm interested in. Maybe I'm interested in autism and behavioral sciences. So here I share with you an example of where you should go if you want to look for uh, for alphabetical order. Uh, schools, maybe Humper has something similar to. Categories, very simple. So the categories is, are, we have so many, right? So if we look at Niagara and what do they do for categories? So Niagara has something for about Niagara College. They have academics 
and then they have admissions, they have fees, student life. Okay, if we look at academics, they have full-time studies, part-time studies, so, uh, and then they have programs, school of studies, their programs are just listed are alphabetical order, but they could have chosen to do administration, business, education, they haven't categorized, they just listed alphabetically order, right? Maybe that's good, maybe that's bad, but maybe they would be benefit of showing all education related. But if I do E, do I see all education related? Maybe I do, maybe I don't, I don't know. So uh, I think you're gonna have, uh, it'll be easier for you with the categories. And I like to look type of study on top. Yes, the type of study on top, student life, da, 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 da. Hmm. Well, within the same section, e, within the same oh, section. Within the same section? Yeah, oh, there, yeah. Where there were alphabets written. Yeah, on top of the alphabets, just on top of the alphabets. Oh, yeah, here you go. Cool. Yeah, and then there are credential yeah. interests. Yeah. So. Cool, up full time second. Yes, so you see, it was a bit hidden, but I, this is the exercise that I would like for you to do. And I would like for you to find, uh, and uh, let me see how many exercises that I, uh, how many examples, and I'm sorry, I'm going over time here. At this point, you can stay or you can quit. It's being recorded, remember? So, uh, and I'm sorry that we are going over time, but if you have to go, you can go. You're not gonna miss, the session will be available at a later time too. But I just want to share a little bit of the specific of this lab. So what do I want you to do is I want you to find, identify a digital product. So it could be a website. Let me just share the screen. So I want you to find a product, a digital product. It could be a website, app, software, other, anything that is organized for each of the five different latch categories. So you could look at all, if there is one site that has all, all of them. If not, then it's okay to look for other sites that has maybe continuum, if you can't find continuum or any other uh, latch to, uh, to the site. Uh, but I like to see one example. I need to see an example of each, okay? For location, alphabetical time, hierarchy, and continuum. And uh, and then I want you to document your findings. So you could do, uh, you could say, my site, I found for location, I found example of location at Sunwing. And then you can say, here's what I have found for Sunwing and put a screenshot, okay? You could do the same thing with alphabetical. So you can say, I have final alphabetical and uh, on the following site, the site is X and here's the screenshot. And then you do the same thing with time. I'd like for you to do different sites than the ones that I have shown you, but I give you some hints. So when it comes to location, look for travel. When you look for alphabetical, uh, school will have uh, a few of them. And if you think of timeline, news, Toronto Sun, Global Mail, the news, blogs, Timelines, it's by time. So usually they will list, you know, from the most recent to the the, the, late, the latest to the the, the oldest. Uh, time is, I think, an easy one to find. Category is probably what we see out there the most often. Continuum is the one that is a little bit more tricky. So I share with you some example of what do I mean by continuum. And, uh, and then, because I know the students had a bit of a challenge with continuum. It's online, you can look and read on your own. But here's some example of what continuum is. So when you think of a continuum is, remember, we're trying to target content that, uh, that uh, we're trying to find example of how the content, the, the content has been structured and presented to you. And the continuum is one way. An example of a continuum would be great or, or great products right, or top products, or most popular products. If you think of a continuum, right, if you think of great, there's great to bad. So you have products or great hotels. Think of our best hotels. It's implied that there's best hotel, there's bad hotels. The company, the website will never tell you about the bad hotels. It's implied, it's inferred, okay? So what I'm showing you on screen here is if we think of great, so a great destination or a top destination or a best destination, it's going to be implied that there's some not so good, right? Yes, it could be like your top rated, 
Absolutely, Ashley. So that's an example of continuum. I'm sharing with you, uh, yes, the hierarchy can be like five stars too, uh, an example, but don't get too caught up on hierarchy continuums. But I just want you to get a sense of how do they are arranged? How have they organized content uh, for those users to find, right? So great, top, top, top rated. Then you will say, well, if there, where are the non-top rated? And when you think of it, really never a company will will say that this hotel is not as top rated, but a star one versus a five star, it's implied, people know, right? Uh, and then the psychology of continuum is there is a big gray zone when you think of it. Uh, anything in between, it could be a little bit of great and a little bit of bad. And as you get in between, you don't really know when you're in the middle, if it's good or bad. But when you go towards the bad, then it's getting bad. It's not as good. But all of this is happening in people's head when they actually go to online and they look for a site. Expensive to inexpensive, right? Uh, think of inexpensive is also often your deals. So deals is on a continuum of it's the cheapest, it's the lower end on the on the deal, but you're gonna have more expensive. So uh, that is an example of a continuum. So when they say deals, that you can already think that there's a sense of continuum at that point, and uh, and then when you do a vacation search, let's say on Sunwing, they're gonna go from cheapest to more expensive. I will say that that is a good example too of how they have grouped the content or listed the content by uh, on the continuum but from the cheapest to the most expensive yes the best seller so i'm saying on the chat best seller right is so their best seller does not so good best seller, right so the best seller the worst seller but they never you're never going to see the worst seller but you're going to see best seller absolutely indigo has them so this is a continuum uh it's helping people to make choices or it's helping people uh to to be inspired or it's giving people a sense that this is a really good product you should read about it you should consider it so it's giving just a, a hint to the consumer that maybe don't know which hotel right so if you're in sunwing and it says best hotel maybe you're really looking for inspiration and uh, and you're not really attached to one hotel yeah you're looking for inspiration so that that means that you're very very high in the customer funnel right Yes, sorting, we're often going to have these options available to you. Absolutely, Ashley. Uh, and then another example of, um, so most popular, we talk $100 to $1,000, right? So from the cheapest to the most expensive, sometimes you want to have the most popular, maybe sometimes you have the best value. The best value is also another uh, example of, con uh, of continuum. Best value to the not so good value, but when we hear not so good value, it's also we're probably cheap. And then do I really want to go to a not so good value for seven days on vacation with my family? Maybe not. This is all the human psychology, all of what is going on when people are actually going through your site and making decisions. Deals under $15, something like that. Would you consider it a hierarchy or a category? Uh, I would say this, so this is where Michael, and I think the previous teacher crossed hierarchy to continuum. Uh, and I would say, let's not get caught up in hierarchy or category or continuum. It is just a way of presenting the information. And the big question is, is this helping me, someone, to actually make a choice? That is what I'm more interested in. I don't want to get caught up in hierarchy, category, or, but the category, I think, is the easiest one because you're, you're creating buckets of content that usually don't have anything in common. So a flight is not a hotel. So you have, it's a product, think of it. And again, I don't want to confuse you, but I really want to keep this exercise simple and easy. And uh, if you do it and you give a try, you are going to get your mark for it. So uh, rarely people will fail on a, uh, on a, uh, on the lab assignment. But when you think of it, product, right? Or products, and then you would have flights. And this is why it gets so confusing. Then you may have uh, hotels. Then you may have uh, cruises. So this is a type of hierarchy, right? It gives a sense of hierarchy. There's like kind of a sense of hierarchy, but really it's hierarchy. My pen is funny. Or is it category and at the end of the day 
the user is not going to know. But your Air Canada is actually doing this, right? So it's category. They're distinct. A flight and the hotels and the cruises are different. And uh, it can look like a hierarchy because maybe there's a parent. So there's a parent, this is a child. I don't know. But this, what is important is Air Canada had all of these products. They had to select their products. And they've also at some point made a decision to make those as a navigation and not even have something called products. Okay. So, uh, and this is really what I want you to be aware of or familiar with. And users, when they come to Air Canada, they're not looking for products. They're looking for this. Right. So, and when they come to Air Canada, and uh, and um, this is probably not what I want. They're looking for a flight. They're looking for a hotel. They're looking for cruises. They will be looking for these items. They will be looking, scanning, like I was doing. They're not going to look for products. They're not going to be looking for products, but they will be interested in these uh, in these other items, and uh, and this will be very useful uh, when you do your I, your information architecture, your labeling as well. And again, you will learn about, you want to minimize the number of levels so it's quicker as well, okay? I'm going to read through the chat as well. But if we go back to continuum, all items usually on the continuums belong to one another, right? If you think of great to bad, it's all talking about the same great or the same bad thing. So it's a, it's a great hotel, it's a bad hotel, or it's a great cruise, right? So, um, and, uh, and then all elements uh, are usually related um, as well. So this, this is why we call them on a continuum. They're, they are related, they are the same, but they just don't have the same characteristic. Uh, when you think of expensive, it's the same thing, right? Usually it's the same thing that you're trying to put a price on. And when we say the most popular, it's usually either it's a hotel or it's a, you're comparing the same thing. A continuum is like comparing apples to apples. Think of it. It's all apples, but they have different characteristics, really. And we see tons of examples out there of continuum uh, or hierarchy as well. There's a, uh, it really plays with human psychology. I have actually put an article for those of you that are really curious and learn more about research I have done about categories with children and how children learn categories and all the inferences that they make, you're gonna love it. It's actually fun because it's psychology and you'll be amazed that this is uh, very much uh, so related to I because it really talks about labeling, categorization and all the inferences that we make. I have put a link to a video that talks more about, I think it's the hatched. And, uh, and then the, um, what you need to know is the question that you want to know, if it's a good latch or not, is will the user understand or will the user know that the what to if the alphabetical order, like in our program for NC, NTC from Niagara College, is it a good way? Is using alphabetical order to help someone to navigate through the program a good approach or was there a better approach? What I want you to do in your assignment is not only are you going to find some example, but I want you to include comments that talks about this is what I have found, how it's organized. Was it a good choice? And do you think it could have been organized differently? So I want you to have a bit of a critique on it, okay? But don't go too long. But I want you to think about, are the categories the good choices? Or is it a good choice to put categories? If for the example where you find location, is it a good choice to use location? The same thing with your time. Is it a good thing to use time as a, a way of grouping? And is it good for the hierarchy or the continuum? Is it a good use of great, most expensive, most popular or not? Or was there a better choice to do it? So that's really it. This is our first lab, our first assignment. So it's meant to be fun and explore, but we are going to talk more about categorization as well as we go. I'm very sorry, it's 3.40. I went really over time, but we're done for the class. So are there anything, let me just go through quickly about uh, some of the chat. Does numbering, numbering pages like one to, no, like the bottom of Google shop pages count as alphabetical? Uh, I would say on a Google search results, I think I would like for you to find examples other than Google's, uh, on the, other than the Google search, that would be my, I'd like for you to look at a site and look on the site. Uh, Kevin, what kind of uh, what kind of categorization that they've used for latch? That'll be my preferences. 
in a workplace environment, if there is, and oh, here's what I will tell you, because the number of pages that you have in the sorting is really not going to help users to find that information. In fact, when you think of sorting uh, the number of pages and be able to navigate to page two and three of your sort, the user doesn't know what's on page two and three and four, right? So uh, that if when they're using uh, numbering or alphabetical well, order, it's helping. Yes. Sorry, Kevin. Did you want to say something? No, that wasn't me. Oh, okay. No problem. Uh, okay. So yes, I'd like for you uh, to really find on a site, like we found some example uh, of how they have group and beyond Google, beyond a Google search result. And then there's a question from William. In a workplace environment, if there is not a UX architect, would the designer assume the architect role to design the ways of sorting? Um, it's a good question. So I would say it needs to be someone who understands how do we group and how do we structure content and someone who will have the insight about the users and the user goal, the users and uh, interaction design as well. That would be uh, my best advice as well. But if you're the designer and now you are going to be trained to do UX design and user and interaction design, then I would say you should be it. It should be you. You will see companies. Some companies don't have UX architects. Some company will hire you thinking or assuming that you know all of this, but not all designers know all how to do IAs. And this is why now you're learning IAs. I don't know if this is helping, William. Perfect. Okay, good. So uh, this is all for week one. So for 5111, we're going to meet again next week, same time. And, uh, and um, I encourage you to do the reading. So this week, I encourage you to go through the uh, async videos. I have skipped some slides as you've seen, uh, but I went through the end. I went through latch, but anything in between, if you want to have more context, you can look at the videos. Uh, the labs, if you have questions about the labs, please reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to help you. And I want to thank you, and I look forward to the semester. There was a, this was the first class uh, for IU Together. I'm hoping that you are excited, and I'm definitely, I am. And uh, and then I will give more of uh, insight about the teams, but really, I think where we're going is for our small assignments, the way that we call them, our small assignments for 5112 and 5111, we should use the same site that you will use with me for five, for 11, 12, for 51, 11, 12, whether it's Metro or uh, or uh, Shopper Dark Smart or the site so that we are going to do all of the mini assignment in this course. And then we're going to do the usability testing as well. Uh, and uh, and then for the big project, we're going to use uh, the big project with Yvonne and Asma. We're going to use either Loblaws, Uber Eats, Zoom, or or um, or Netflix as well. I think that's pretty much the direction. And I'm happy to see that the teams, it looks like all teams, pretty much teams have been formed. If there's still someone who's not assigned, so uh, make sure you connect or put yourself into a team uh, as well. And I'm happy to see that most teams are complete. Thank you so much for whoever has taken the initiative to do this. And I wish you a good weekend. And week one is behind you and behind us. We'll see you next week. So enjoy, and uh, I look forward to uh, to our next uh, sessions. Thank you, everyone.